Hi, and welcome to episode 13 of season 2 of Help, I'm a Pastor. My name is Gavin Inson, the Senior Pastor of the Active Church in Johannesburg, South Africa. And we started doing these broadcasts last year when the lockdowns were happening and the church had to begin, um, <clears throat> you know, um, redefining itself and uh, fighting to keep itself relevant um, in, in a world that's uh, COVID-19 and where many people are becoming more and more happy to be locked down and to have their freedom taken away from them. Anyway, why don't you grab a cup of coffee and enjoy a drink of coffee with me as um, we get into some teaching today. And I really believe that God's going to bless you in this. I just want to encourage you to go and look at the previous episodes that we've done this year. We've been focusing on the cell group and how the cell group can be the backbone of the church or the ministry that you're involved in or the ministry that you're leading. I really would encourage you to go and have a look at those I believe if you start implementing some of the principles we've spoken about in those in those sessions, that uh, God's really going to bless you. And, um, you know, last week we spoke about having a macro cell where you pull all of your people together, and I really believe that's going to be awesome. All right, let's just pray together, and uh, God's going to touch you today, and I believe He's going to speak some powerful things to you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, I just pray for this time together that you use the words of my mouth and speak into each one of our hearts that uh, we will change nations through you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, um, <clears throat> you know, I've spoken to you before about the ladder of success. And uh, we actually went through this last year. And we spoke about the fact that the ladder of success is a ladder that is um, a, a process or a, or a pathway, whatever you want to call it, for the church towards success. Now, it's a pathway both for the church as a whole, both for your local church and also in, in the life of each and every individual within your church. It really is a powerful, powerful concept, and it's based on the way Jesus made his disciples, the way he formed his disciples. Now, the ladder of success has four steps on this ladder. The first one is win. That's where you evangelize. The second one is consolidate. That's where you make the faith solid of those that you've won. The third one is disciple. And the fourth one is send. Now, um, we spoke a lot about winning last year. We did speak a little bit about consolidation last year. So I would encourage you to go and look at last year's episodes. You know, for that, uh, we spoke about the overall process. Is it we right? actually go in and we explain this process in, in detail, win, consolidate, disciple, and send. And that's a way that you can change all of the people in your church from being members to the place where they become leaders and soldiers in the army of God and where they become fruitful. Now, the Apostle Paul, after he has won on the road to Damascus, we see there that in Acts chapter 9, verse 19, it says, Afterward he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. So he stays with the believers. And obviously in that time, they would have been chatting to him. These guys would have been scared of him. Now they're chatting to him about the gospel and um, you know, showing, showing him some certain things. And after he stayed with him, after he had been consolidated, Immediately in verse 20, he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying that he's indeed the Son of God. Now, he got himself into a lot of trouble because the Jews were happy with Saul. He was going around uh, 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 arresting Christians and doing all of those sorts of things. But now he's preaching the gospel. And so what you find there is that in these early days, you see the church taking care of him and actually moving him from place to place. And that's what consolidation is all about. And, um, you know, we're going to be talking about consolidation for 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 the next few weeks. And so I really encourage you to come on this journey because the, 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 the question that you have, to, you have to get right if you want your ministry to grow is what do you do with the new believers? Okay, how do, how do you look after them? How do you make sure that they are okay? Now, I just want to read to you from Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, where the Apostle Paul says, My children with whom I am again in labor until Christ is formed in you. So in other words, consolidation is about laboring for the people that you've won until the character of Christ is formed in them. <clears throat> now, what I want to tell you, and this is very, very important. I haven't spoken about this at all in prior situation rooms, but what is vitally important here is that um, as part of the vision, there's actually training that we do. And there's actually two parts to the training. The first part is life class. That's any new person who becomes a believer. They come onto the life class. And the life class is at the heart of the entire consolidation processes, process. And so everything that I'm going to be teaching you in the next few weeks 
please understand that the life class is vitally important. And so the life class is something that happened. We actually do it on a Thursday night. And um, where the new believer comes and we teach him basics about Christianity. We teach him basics about the word, why the words are powerful. We teach him how to pray. We teach him about the blood of Jesus. We teach him about baptism. All the basic things of the faith. As part of the life class, the, the, you know, um, in, in the class there's a person who gives the lesson and they guide that person. They like a, sorry, they facilitate that person. So they like a facilitator. And, and then what happens is that there's another person that's involved. And this person speaks to them every day from a devotional. There's a devotional that they go through every single day. And, um, you know, they, 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 their guide actually teaches them how to pray. Their guide teaches them how to, bring, uh, to read the Bible. Their guide, using that material, um, helps them to get their own faith to become solid in the faith. Now, here's the important thing. A person who has been one to Jesus is a baby Christian. And just like a, a human baby, um, you know, needs to be looked after, um, you know, and, 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 and uh, the, the parents need to feed the baby and clean the baby and love the baby and do all those sorts of things. It's exactly the same with a new believer. Um, consolidation is actually essential for the development, um, you know, of the ministry because it allows us to care for the fruit that we've won so that the fruit remains. If we don't consolidate those believers, then we lose them and the fruit does not remain. Now, can you imagine if, if you have a baby and you bring that baby home and you're all excited and your whole family is excited about the baby and then you, you leave the baby outside on the first night when you bring the baby home without shelter, without nourishment and without the proper care. That baby will die. And this is very important that we understand this, that baby dies and it's exactly the same in the church. You know, often we evangelize and we go out, we do crusades, we do all sorts of things, and we go and win people to Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, there's an enemy that wants to destroy them. The moment they give their eyes to Jesus, the enemy is going to attack them. And unless they have a spiritual parent, as it were, that is looking after them, that is helping them, that is helping to build their faith, then things are going to go wrong. New believers do not understand the spiritual world. They do not understand the dangers that are out there. They do not understand the enemy or the plans that the enemy has against them. And they don't have the spiritual weapons that enables them to defend themselves. And so there's a responsibility when you're the leader. You're the leader of someone that you're busy consolidating to ensure that um, every person that the Lord has entrusted into your care, um, that they receive the necessary love, that they receive the necessary attention, and that they be taught what they need to learn until they are established in their faith. If you think about the, the word consolidate, it's C-O-N, and then it has the word solid, and then eight. In other words, what you're doing in the consolidation process is you're making their faith solid. Now, we're going to be teaching you over the next four or five weeks, however long it takes us, how to consolidate people that you've won, so that when you win the people to Jesus, that you don't lose them. But I just want to remind you what we spoke about when we spoke in, in the lessons about winning. And this is very, very important. And that is the fact that, um, that uh, if you don't win people, if you don't go out and evangelize, if you don't invite people, if you don't preach a gospel to them, you won't have anyone to consolidate. So the basis of the vision is winning. But once you've won them, what do you need to do with them in order to keep them? And that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, there's a very powerful lesson on that actually in the, 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 the series that, that we actually started broadcast, well, that we broadcast on this channel last year. It's called Stavros. It's spelled S-T-A-U-R-O-S. And it's pronounced Stavros because it's a Greek word for the cross. It's about the life of Pastor Cesar Castellanos that God revealed the G12 vision to through, through, through him. And uh, there's actually, you know, you actually pick up at one point a lesson of consolidation when he was losing people and he wasn't happy. And God said to him, you've got to consolidate the fruit that you've won. So I'd really encourage you, you know, go watch that movie. You, 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 you'll get an understanding of the, the spiritual aspect of G12. And if you want to know anything more about the G12 vision, then please email us at g 12 activechurchorg That's g 12 activechurchorg Give us your details. We'll contact you and we'd, we'd love to assist you, you know, in building the vision. Anyway, I'm going to pray for you right now, and then I'll let you be on your way. Father, I just pray for every pastor, every minister, every leader that is watching this broadcast. Lord, that you would light up a spark inside of them, that they could form people with the character of Christ who will become part of your army to change this world and to extend the kingdom. I pray that your hand of blessing would be all over them in everything that they do, that you keep them from all harm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. I'll see you again next time.